Yesterday's, I mean, I think that was one of the that was one of the best tours that we done. Yeah, that tour. That's that tour was fun. It was fun. Was like, oh, oh man, I, I think I had a reputation of corrupting people. I do, I do. Man. I think, I think everybody like, they like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna live like a life that's holy. But when I want to go like be free, I'm gonna call Sean Martin. I gotta, I gotta work on that, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still love the Lord. Oh yes, sir. I, you know, I still cuss a little bit, drink a little bit. I stopped smoking though. Mm -hmm. I stopped smoking cigarettes. Mm. Cigarettes. <laughs> I stopped smoking cigarettes. So you know. Uh, with Kirk, man. So I was in the whole God's property era. Okay. Um. And then you know, one day, how it really came about was one day he, you know, he wanted to kind of change up his band situation. Um, so he was like, you know, he had reached out to myself and Keith Taylor, mm -hmm. uh, Peabody at the time. The Bible was still on board. He was like, you know, would y'all consider being you know, part of my band? I was like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, whatever. It was funny because, like, and I tell, you know, the story all the time. When I was younger, I used to think Kirk didn't like me. Really? Yeah, I thought, it, I just, you know, I just didn't think he liked me. So I'd be like, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, you know. But now it's like. You know, of course, we like, you know, now we think of Steve because he has a mental problem as well. But, um, no, he does. He has a mental problem. He's ADD. It's real, really bad ADD. ADHD. It's real bad. But, you know, he's a great guy. But, um, but like I say, from the whole God's property thing, mm -hmm. that went into, um, after that became defunct, then, um, let's say, you know, you know, started playing just in his band. And then from that, it went to, you know, hey, I'm doing this doing this record. Would you mind co-producing it? And, oh, that, nice. and that was the Hero album. Really? And it was like, yeah, sure. You know, you know, 24th or five, you know, at the time. It was wow. Like, yeah, it's, it's cool. And uh, and then from there, it was like, well, I'm gonna do this Fight of My Life album. You want to co-produce with him? It was like, yeah. You know, then from there we just kept going. Yeah. You know. So I, I started working with Erica like around 99. Okay. Uh, when Kirk asked me to join his band, it was like around 2000. Okay, so that was around around the same time. Yeah, like, like yeah, 2000, 2001. I want, well, my first date with Kirk was, my first date with Kirk as a as an artist, not like Kirk and God's Property, but my first date with Kirk as an artist was January 1st, 2000. So that was, oh, wow. it was, it was like a New Year's Eve thing in Indianapolis. Got you. You know, but prior to that, we had just finished recording um, the Mama's Gun album with Erica out of Palmyra, between Palmyra, Electric Lady, and Dallas Sound Lab. You were at all? Mm hmm And I was still a college student. Yikes. Full, a full-time college student. So, you know, so that's right. why I smoked. Silence for real, man. I was shot and I was playing at church. I was, I was I was doing so I was doing so much. Yeah. And it's like now I look back at it, it's like how 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 the hell was I doing all that? I played at church on Sunday mornings, they had rehearsal on Thursday nights. Erica would record her record, you know, like I said, between Palmyra and uh and Electric Lady in New York. We go to New York and just sit there, you know, you know, create and all this kind of stuff. Um and I said, then I'm a full-time student, so I'm like trying to, and that's back when the internet was still kind of like coming together. Yeah. You know, 2000, the internet was still kind of yeah, really, still kind, still kind of coming together. Right. So, you know, so so if you didn't have that good dial-up service in your hotel room, you really couldn't get your work done. <laughs> that's right. You know, you know, you got to have a computer with the, with the, with the, with the modem in it. 
Mm-hmm. So you could get to the internet, you know, and get that AOL. So, you know, I mean, it was, I said, it was a lot going on. But that's how, you know, that was all, that was all simultaneous. Wow. I uh, co-wrote uh, Orange Moon with Erica. Wow. Myself, it's myself, Braylon, um, Eugene Young, and another guy, Gino Aguilar. We were the and kind of like we were the band for the for the album, mm-hmm. for the for the most part. Quest and James and Pino played some stuff too, of course, with um, Dylan, you know, the other dope producers and stuff. Yeah. Then uh, so so we did uh, Orange Moon, and me and Jaborn did and on. Um, Clever, which is kind of like just pull some in on. Times are wasting. Mm. Um, what else did we do on the album? I want to say that might be it. Oh, Bag Lady. Yeah. Yeah, Bag Lady. Mm-hmm. When I look, when I look back at it, of course, as you know, it's like, how was I doing all that? But I guess when I was in it at the time, I just did it. You know, yeah. it was just you know, like it's like this is what I this is what I do. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I think the the hardest part for me, like now now that I think back I think back at it, like having to go in and tell your professor, hey, I'm not gonna be in your class this week because I'm finna go to New York to record with Erica Badu. That they probably like, what the f-? I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you actually came to tell me that, you know? And I remember I had a I had a piano uh, teacher. At, at North Texas, and I would tell her, you know, hey, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna miss my piano lesson because we had to take, you know, piano lessons, yeah. like classical piano lessons. And I told her, I was like, man, I was like, I gotta, so I have, I have the opportunity of a lifetime because what it was, opportunity of a lifetime. So to work with Erica Badu, you know, she know who she was. You know, Miss Anna Basoff was, uh, how old birth at the time? Probably a hundred and. 15. <laughs> she didn't know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, she wanted me to be this, you know, this world renowned <laughs> classical piano player. And I'm like, look, it was cool, you know, it was, it was cool. Play for a lot of beer, <laughs> play for a lot of beer, a lot of, I mean, you know, you, you know how that, you know, you know how it's play for a lot of beer, a lot of nights. Yeah. So we would go, we get in that 15 passenger van or that big yellow bus. Uh-huh. You know, we had a big yellow school bus. Wow. Get on that bus and we rode. I throw my phantom in the back of the thing. Yeah. Nice. So much fun though. Sleeping on, you know, you know, sleep on somebody's floor with a with a uh sleeping bag. It's cool. Mike is a really, really great person. Mike is very he's a very kind and endearing person. Just by nature. Yeah. Like, you know, like when you when you but when you meet like his grandma and his dad and his mom, when you meet them, it's like that's that's just kind of how they are. Yeah. You know, so it's so it's really, it's really really they are, hey hey, you know, I was messing with his grandmother, yeah yeah, I was messing with her, <laughs> make her dance all the time. But um, but but at, but as a leader, Mike was always very driven. Mm-hmm. You know. What was going on for me in that moment is that's when I was realizing that Corey is a fucking alien and there's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> there's nothing you can do. It. He's a freaking, he's a he's an alien. I mean, you know, no, nah, I, I think Corey is one of those players that has always uh, tonally pushed the envelope. So, you know, it's kind of like, and that was, a, that was one of the few times where Lings has always been kind of like an open solo, mm-hmm. you know, in, in that part. But I think that was one of the few times where he just, like, really just dug into it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think out of all those, out of all of those takes, each one was amazing. But I think that one take, it was like, okay, like, like you can't just keep, like, smashing this thing, like, you know. So it was a series of smashings. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, with, like, when we do those records, it's like, um, We'll do multiple takes. Cause you know, th- you know, those records are never overdubbed. Okay, right. There, there's no yeah, overdub. Yeah. If you make a mistake, it's probably going to be on the record. You know what I'm saying? You know, if, you know, or, or whatever. Unless they can go and like nudge something out and nudge stuff around. I know Mike nudges my stuff. Around. I get excited. I start rushing. I don't give a shit. I, 
feels great. But you know, but you know, but but uh, but it's, it's always just kind of you know there, and uh, we do like multiple takes, and whichever one is the best take is the one that you know can be used or whatever. So yeah, it's just a series of just smash horrific solos. Mm-hmm. You know, like I say, it's it's five other there are five other solos of Lingus that no one will ever hear. Wow, that works. That are just as smash horrific as that. But for some reason, it was like, that one was like, really? Like, really? Like, this is, this is what we're doing today? Because one of them, he, just took, he took it on organ. It was all, like, just, you know, organ only. Wow. It was like, okay. And then we got to that, like, so we got to that one so, uh, with the King Korg and the Kronos. It's like, okay, this is, uh, this is different. You know, but it worked out, man. You know, you know. and like I say, Korg is an alien. And there's nothing we can do about it. He ain't going nowhere. <laughs> That's one of my best friends in life, man. I love it. I love that little boy. Mm-hmm. I love that dude, he man. He loves you too. I know, man. We, 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 I think the two of us together are, are a group of idiots. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see that. I mean, it's all about this one night. <laughs> we went to Waffle House like 3 in the morning and the lady wouldn't help us. <laughs> so it was like, you know what? Fine. Hey, I'm gonna go back here and cook me some pork chops. <laughs> what you want? No. And then the phone starts ringing, so I pick up the phone. I'm like, "Thank you for calling my house. I'm gonna help you." And I'm writing down the order. I'm like, "Okay, two eggs scrambled with cheese. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Let me get two eggs scrambled with cheese." Man, that was so fun. Like around 23, 23, 24, I'd also became the minister of music at my church. Really? Mm-hmm. And so, so that, that kind of took a lot of my focus, too. You know, so I'm, so I'm 24 years old at a church with 10,000 people, you know, in a choir, of, you know, of almost 250. You know, that's, just, that's the mass choir, let alone the young adult choir, the Sanctuary choir, the children's choir, the youth choir, the male chorus, women's chorus, praise team. It was like, you know, of course, now I look back at my life and I'm like, what the hell was I doing at 24? Wow. You know what I'm saying? You know, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why Dr. Haynes <laughs> would even do wait, that. Wait, You're at Freddie Haynes Church? Yeah. The minister of music? Yeah. I was, I was, the Freddie Haynes? The Freddie Haynes. The <laughs> Freddie Haynes. Freddie Haynes is probably one of the greatest speakers Preachers, pastors of our time, like literally, like like nobody. I I don't nobody, nobody puts it together like him. You know, it's and it's funny when you when you're a minister of music, at a, especially at a church like like French and West, the music part is really only like twenty percent of it. You know, it's the it's the people, it's the the caring of people, it's the. Because when when you're over an auxiliary like that, you're basically the extension of the pastor. Yeah. You know, because they want to be able to con- connect uh, with the ministry in some some shape, form, or fashion. And so you're dealing with, you know, volunteers. You know, who's uh, some people just want to be around people. Some people need to be around people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know. And you, you you manage you managing that plus a staff plus a you know, but I mean but it, it, like I said I mean it was a great experience. Well, three of them three of them are collective. So, mm-hmm. uh, of course, with the Snarky Puppy, uh, um, I can't even remember what the the things I know. One was like jazz R and B something, jazz record of the year, which is uh, I think Silver. Um, and then Culture Vulture, I think, won for jazz something of the something. Those three are with uh, Snarky. And then I have four for producing with Kurt. Jeez. The Hero album, Fight of My Life, Hello Fear, and Losing My Religion, which is the one that's down there. Yeah, man, too. So that that whole that whole night. I think Spinderella was DJing. Mm-hmm. We played. They Ruben Studd in it. That's the first time I met Alvin. Wow. Cornbread. Yeah. Um, uh, met him, and I mean, Effa was Effa was at the party trying to edit Pro Tools. 
It's like, man, if you ain't got it by now, with nah. all this ass around here, nah, you ain't gonna never get it. Nah. Man, everybody, Jamie Foxx was at, mm-hmm. every, everybody was at that party. Yeah. It was at the Oscars. Yeah. Yeah, and then we played, we played our set, and then I don't remember shit else after that. Yeah, I don't really remember anything. I, I just remember it was a Patron party. I hung out with Ricky Rouse, and oh, you remember Ricky oh, Rouse? Yeah, oh yeah. I remember. I think Rick, he'll be here. He'll be here Saturday. Oh man, tell that brother I said what's up. Yeah, so man. I said we was telling story, Chaka story. Yeah, oh yeah. I remember Ricky Rouse. He had met the gir- He had met the girl that was giving the one of the girls was giving the Patron out, and. He just has great stories. Man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had some. I just say this. We stayed at a really, really player hotel. Yeah. We stayed at a really, really, really player hotel. And as a result, with Patron, it was a great time. I've since then rededicated my life back to Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and my Bible says, <laughs> old things have passed away. <laughs> yeah, we gotta do a shot for your birthday, man. Yeah, man. The shirt just started getting naked in the limo. I said, no, I don't. <laughs> That's what's funny. I feel like, I feel like it wasn't a strip club. I think it was like some regular. Yeah, I think it was just like some regular club. I, I remember that. Uh, but so I, I run down the stairs, and Curtis and I told Curtis like, man, y'all need to have a real conversation with your boy, cause I'm not that guy. I, you know, I do love the Lord, but I would beat that ass <laughs> in public and tell everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, but. You know, but like I said, but Donnie, Donnie's actually, you know, he's a super cool. Love that dude. Yeah. Love that dude to death.